Hello, welcome to another edition of the Pace Report. I'm Brian Pace reporting live here at Dizzy's Club Coca-Cola here at Jazz at Lincoln Center here in New York City. Carl Allen and Rodney Whitaker came in that wonderful class during the 1980s called the Young Lions Crew. And those musicians really kind of catapulted and kept the tradition of jazz going. Musicians like Terrence Blanchard, Donald Harrison, as well as the Marcellus Brothers, Harry Connick Jr. Well, tonight here at Dizzy's, they're going to be playing selections off their latest Mac Avenue's record release, Work To Do. And what's beautiful about this CD is that they're taking soul classics and even gospel songs and bringing it to the form of modern straight ahead jazz. to do this latest Mac Avenue's record release takes me back to a lot of those classic soul jazz records from the 1960s was that the groove that you guys were wanting to go for you know uh, you know and Carl could probably speak to this but I don't think we consciously thought about we wanted to create some music that was toe tap a toe tapping experience that everyone could relate to but I don't think we sought out to make soul jazz. We just wanted to play jazz, and we didn't consciously think of that. Well, yeah, I mean, as Rodney said, it wasn't a plan per se. You know, the thing that we were both in agreement with is that we just wanted to play some music that we felt good about playing. And uh, the interesting thing that happened, even with the first record, Get Ready, uh, we would go on tour and people would come to us and say, man, this just reminds me, very much like you said, this just reminds me of home. It reminds me of growing up. You know, this is the kind of music that, you know, that I love, you know, and it was like, wow. So we felt there was a connection. And I think that just came from, from us just trying to be honest with our approach to the music. You know, it's in all sincerity with the music. It's like a lot of the younger generation, and you guys came in, of the whole Young Lion School in the 80s. But my whole problem with jazz now is that a lot of the musicians are not taking the risk and playing stuff like the Isley Brothers or, or uh, Stevie Wonder. You guys kind of were very brave in choosing this material. How'd you guys select doing this? Well, you know, we, we, we tell the story all the time. It's, it's interesting with the first record, you know, Rodney and I have been talking about doing the had been talking about doing the project for quite some time, and then even after we get, had gotten signed to Mac Avenue, months went by, and we would talk on the phone. And as we got closer to to the recording date, uh, every conversation would end like, "Listen, bro, when we talk next time, we got to talk about the music. What we're gonna do? What we're gonna record?" It's like, "Okay, okay." Conversation would end. Next conversation, same thing. So. We never talked about the music. Now here it is the day before the first rehearsal, we're talking, and Rodney's like, well man, what are we gonna do, bro? I said, he's like, well, I got six tunes, what you got? I said, well, I got six tunes. We didn't talk about the vibe or whose tune, you know, we, we briefly talked a little bit about maybe this tune, maybe this tune, but it wasn't something that we had planned out. And um, even with originals, and so when we got to the rehearsal, we would just go through one tune after another, and we would just look at each other and just start laughing. Because if we just 
it was like, it was as if we had planned it out, you know, but I think it was just indicative of just our, our relationship over the years in terms of just how we think about music. And it just, uh, we were on the same page, so it worked out. <laughs> How did you guys get together? I know you guys recorded off and on throughout the years, but what made you guys just say, okay, we got to record together? Well, you know, we've been talking about recording together, I, I would say at least, you know, lot, to over 10 years, you know, since, since the late 90s. And, um, but just never had time. You know, I started playing with Lincoln Center. Carl was doing his projects, producing and everything, and our paths kind of went in two different directions. And then when we both were running jazz programs, we were finally able to have that conversation and, and had both been talking to Al Pryor from Mac Avenue. And Al actually suggested to us that we put together a group. And we originally thought about putting together a co-led group with Cyrus Chestnut, but you know, he was busy doing his project. So Carl and I settled on doing a project together and Cyrus happened to record on the first one. And you know, we thought about guitar players and Rodney Jones came to mind and originally we had Steve Wilson on the first first record and um, but uh, after we worked a little bit with Vince and Herring um, we were looking for a new alto player because Vince is pretty busy uh, Carl suggested that we get Tim Green and we both worked with him at the Monk competition and thought he would be a, a natural fit but it this is something this project is something that's evolved over 20 years this is 20 years in the making you know <laughs> You know, one of the things I love about work to do is that you have a great tenor saxophonist by the name of Kirk Whalem on this CD. Now, Kirk, everybody knows, is part of the whole smooth jazz, the contemporary jazz, but you kind of brought him home on this disc. Tell me about that. Well, it's interesting. First of all, you know, whenever Rodney and I have an opportunity, we just give big props to Kirk. Uh, not only for Green to do it, but he was so beautiful in the studio, man. Not just musically, but personally. It just, um, I mean, you know, I, I can't even, it was a very deep day uh, just having him there. But, you know, 
Rodney had known Kurt for quite some time, and I had met Rod, uh, Kurt some time ago and uh, on a festival in Utah, and he just happened to mention to me that, that he liked one of the tunes that we had recorded on the previous record, this tune uh, that I had written for my wife called Lachey's Walk. And, uh, and so as we were leading up to the session, Rodney and I were talking and both thought that it would be nice to have Kurt on it because conceptually he fit what we were doing. And while we were in the studio, and Rodney can talk about this, while we were in the studio, he, he and Rodney had this conversation about how much he would love to be able to do more straight ahead stuff and how the smooth jazz thing wasn't something he had went out to purposely be a part of. He just kind of got labeled as that. You know, you know, partially because of the the stuff with Whitney Houston and other things, but uh, he's a serious musician, man. A serious musician. guys have the time to to come together and put the project together i mean because your family you family oriented you play with other musicians too your producers how does this work careful planning you know we we talk all the time and we we get schedules and what we do is try to um look at certain time frames when we're free and then try to put the concert dates or tours around those dates or when the calls come in we just you know, make it a priority to to uh, to make it happen. And you know, a big part of that is it's not just the two of us being available, but you know, we're trying to really develop the band and develop a group sound. So having the personnel, the guys in the band available is also very important. And you know, a big part of that is not, it goes way beyond the music. You know, I mean, we often say if we're, if we're just on the road and it's the five of us sitting around a hotel room, we got to be able to get along, you know, and the stuff that we can talk about, like, you know, Rodney and I, you know, hanging with Rodney Jones or with Tim Green. I mean, it's like it's about five Kendrick spirits that we can just sit and just be regular. And so that becomes an extension of what happens on the bandstand and vice versa. That'll do it again for another edition of the Pace Report. I'm Brian Pace reporting live here at Dizzy's Club Coca-Cola here at Jazz at Lincoln Center. I'd like to personally thank Carl Allen and Rodney Whitaker for their time, as well as the staff here at Dizzy's for their hospitality. As always, please visit my website, www.thepacereport.com, for my weekly column as well as my past segments. Until next time, remember, if it's in the groove, it'll make you move. Peace.